Welcome back to Tennis Talk. My name's Cam Williams, and it's time for the weekly ranking show where we go through all the ATP and WTA rankings for the week. And we had some big names playing last week, and we had some big names playing well, and some other names dropping down the rankings this week. And of course, we've got the WTA and ATP finals coming up very soon as well. It's starting to take shape. Let's go have a look at the results from last week because we had four tournaments, two on the men's tour and two on the women's. So if you look at the results from last week, we had four tournaments, starting with the Jasmine Open, and we had Elise Mertens defeating Cornet in the final, 6-2, 6 love. Very dominant performance there. In Ostrava, we had a huge upset with Krejcikova taking out Sviantec in a very close three set of 5-7, 7-6, 6-3. First time Sviantec's lost in a final for a long, long time. And Krejcikova got a boost in the rankings for winning that tournament. Over on the men's tour, we had the Tokyo Open with Fritz taking out Tiafo. 7676 and Fritz got a big reward after winning that event and at the Astana Open Novak Djokovic continued his way back on tour beating City Pass 6364 to lift his second trophy in two weeks. Let's start with the WTA rankings now. And despite all the players that played this week, we didn't have any change. Fiontech stayed at number one, Jabur at number two, Conservate at three, Bedosa at four, Sabalenka at five, Pagula at six, Zachary at seven, Goff at eight, Halep at nine, and Garcia rounds out the top 10 for this week. But next week and the week after, we have some big tournaments on the WTA. And a lot of the names that I just mentioned are playing. Also, Indian Wells points are going to drop off. So expect some of these names to drop down the rankings because remember Indian Wells was this time last year. Having a look at the race of the finals now and it is starting to take shape. And still only the two players qualified for now, Sviantec and Jabur. Pagula is at number three this week, very close behind the cutoff line for the qualification. So expect her to qualify potentially next week. Goff also there at number four. Garcia at five. But we had a change in the middle with Sabalenka going down number seven and Kazakina going up to number six after Kazakina played last week and Sabalenka didn't. Next week, though, both those names are going to have to play well. And another change with Zachary dropping down and Kudamatova jumping into the eighth spot. Zachary down to nine. So Kudamatova with a very good week last week. Zachary had a very poor week. She takes that eight spot for now and benches at number 10 for this week. And like I mentioned, it is going to be very interesting next week because we've got a WTA 500 event. Most of the names that are playing for qualification are playing. And then, of course, Guadalajara, which is a 1,000 event to finish the season. So six spots up for grabs, two weeks left to the finals. It's going to be a very fun finish. Having a look at the players that have gone up in the rankings this week outside the top 10 and Krejcikova. She's gone up nine spots to number 14 after winning the Ostrava Open, defeating Sviantec, of course, along the way. And Mertens. She won the Jasmine Open. She's gone up six spots to number 36 in the world. So both players who won titles last week got a boost in the ranks. And the players that dropped down in the rankings, Pliskova, she dropped down three spots to number 22. And Rogers dropped down two spots to number 37. Just because players below them played better and they got pushed down the ranks. Having a look at the ATP rankings now and... We had some changes to the ranks with Elkris staying at number one, Nadal staying at two, Rude comes in at three, Medvedev still at four, but a change in the middle with Stepanos Tsitsipas going up to number five, pushing Zverev down to number six. And of course, we haven't seen Zverev for a long time. We don't know if we'll see Zverev. He is very likely to drop out of the top 10 completely if he doesn't play. So we'll keep an eye on Zverev at Tsitsipas. Did well this week, got up the ranks. Novak stays at number seven, even though he won a tournament this week. But we had a big change down the bottom of the top 10 with Taylor Fritz going up three spots to number eight in the world, kicking Norrie down to number 10, two spots lower than last week for Norrie, and her catch out of the top 10 completely with Rublev sandwiched in number nine in the middle. So Fritz at eight, Rublev at nine, Norrie at 10, and Fritz winning his third trophy of the year and a top 10 ranking for the first time ever. So Taylor Fritz... Had a very strong week and got rewarded. Taking a look at the A to B rankings now for the finals race, and it's very, very close. We have four players qualified. Alcaraz, Nadal, Rude, and Pass. They're all qualified for the finals. But Novak Djokovic, he has now officially qualified. He won Wimbledon, and he can't mathematically drop out of the top 20. So that what means he's going to be playing in the finals, officially qualified, leaving three spots left for the A to B finals. Medvedev drops down one spot to number six because Djokovic qualified. Rublev goes down a spot to number seven. And Taylor Fritz, he jumps up to number eight due to his win in Tokyo. Ali Asim goes down to number nine. Her catch to number 10. And Zverev drops out of the top 10 completely. And of course, we don't know when we're seeing Zverev. So don't expect him to be back in the top 10 unless he does miraculously come back. But only three spots up for grabs. And there was a lot of players 
that are looking for those spots. We've still got guys like Norrie, Sinner going for those spots. And of course, with only three spots left and only about four weeks left of the tour, the next few weeks are going to be massive for guys like Rublev, Medvedev, Tsitsipas, Eliasim, and Hercatch. Having a look at the players that have gone up in the rankings this week and Big Foe. After making the final in Tokyo, he's gone up two spots to number 17, which is a career high for him. And Quan, he made the semifinals of Tokyo, and he's got up 34 spots back in the top 100. He's number 86 in the world. The two guys who played well last week gets rewarded. And going down in the rankings, we had Korda. He went down two spots to 47, and Murray, two spots to 48. Both guys didn't play last week, and they both dropped down the rankings because of it. So there you have it. They are the rankings for this week, and it is starting to heat up with the finals only around the corner. And of course, Indian Wells, points are starting to drop off as well over the next couple of weeks. So a couple of those top 10 players who might have played well at Indian Wells last year, I'm talking about Bedosa, Azarenka, Nori, for example, they're all in trouble of dropping out of the top 10 or even further in the rankings if they don't play well. But let me know down in the comments below who is going to qualify for the finals because that is what we're dealing with at the moment. We've got three spots left for the men, six left for the women, and we've only got a few left weeks of the finals. Uh, and we've only got a few weeks and left. We've only got a few weeks left until the finals. It's all starting to get serious now. Let me know down in the comments below who's making the finals this year.